Hi everybody and welcome to the Surface Interval in association with Empora. All of us have to go through what the industry defines as recreational diving when we all learn to become scuba divers. In most cases, recreational diving is technically anything above 30 or 40 meters deep. Depending on where you learn, it's either 30 or 40 meters deep but it's pretty deep. Anything below 30 or 40 meters is considered technical diving uh, because of the added complications with depth. It's a bit more complicated. Because you progress deeper and deeper, the more you train, everybody is technically a recreational diver from the get-go. As you progress through your training, you get closer and closer to technical depths until you become a technical diver, but you can still dive in recreational depths, obviously. Now, recreational diving does have its perks, but it does suck in certain ways as well. So let's look at some of the ways why recreational diving sucks and why it's awesome. One hundred percent of scuba divers can dive in recreational depths, which means that it can get pretty crowded at popular dive sites. You even have snorkelers and the odd free divers around in shallow water dive sites. No matter how big the dive site is, with all of the space in the ocean above and below, left and right, you still have somebody swim into you blindly. Or when you're just kind of cruising around doing your thing, you'll bop something with a fin. You'll turn around and someone behind you is getting all upset that they swam into your fin. At deeper depths, fewer divers are qualified to even be there, so the dive sites tend to be less crowded. With fewer divers that can reach or spend much time at those deeper dive sites, that means there's going to be fewer boats as well that will head out there. Popular dive sites and shallow dive sites mean more boat traffic, which is quite dangerous when you're on the surface, but when you're on the water, it is just annoying. And worse, you can find glass bottom boats as well. I don't mind being watched on dive, I'm not doing anything weird, but the low rumble of the motors can be heard for miles around, and when the boat's right on top of you, you can literally feel it inside of your chest vibrating. It's best just to dive somewhere a little bit less crowded. On top of boat noise, because you're diving closer to the surface whilst recreational diving, most recreational divers dive on open circuits. Once you make the turn to rebreathers, you'll suddenly notice just how noisy open circuit actually is. Regulated technology has come quite a long way in the past few decades, but they still sound like Darth Vader in the water. And in the water, noise travels. Quite a lot of recreational divers, they'll also only dive once or twice a year or so. So they don't always know how to set up their dive computer properly, or they just have their alarm set at a certain level or at the factory presets. Once you reach a certain depth under the water, and everybody else follows you, you will hear the chorus of the dive computer just beeping their heart out. So it's best to try and stay away from that crowd. Recreational diving is nice and warm. Closer to the surface, the sunlight penetrates it and it keeps the water nice and warm. The deeper down you go, the colder it's gonna get. And at certain depths, you'll find what's called a thermocline, a literal thin line in the water that once you swim through that, the temperature just drops a degree or two. That might not sound much, but you notice it on the way back down and the way back up. The way back up is a bit nicer because you're going from a really cold area like into a warm bath you've ascended into. The deeper down you go, the thinner your wetsuit is gonna get as well with compression. At the surface, your five mil is gonna be about five mil thick. So you have plenty of insulation. The deeper down you go, the thinner and thinner it's gonna get. So the water gets colder and your exposure protection gets thinner too. If you want to stay warm, then just stay shallow. Because it's warmer and brighter, there tends to be more vibrant life at recreational depths. 
Recreational diving is very bright and colourful. The deeper you go, the less light there is and the colours tend to disappear as well. So the animals and the wildlife, they tend to be less colourful as well. There's no point in being a bright and colourful fish if no one else can see it. That's one, that's one reason why all of those deep, deep, deep species, they're all just black or brown, because what's the point in being a vibrant green or something if no one can see the colour green at your depth? With warmth and sunlight comes plant life, and plant life is food for animals, so recreational depths are often teeming with things to see. The deeper down you go, you'll still find wildlife, but it's often farther apart and quite shy to strangers, so when you do eventually see something, it is much more of an experience, but there are a lot of empty dives. Recreational diving isn't particularly complicated. With our dive computers and the reliability of our dive gear today, you can jump in on a dive with minimal planning and nine times out of 10, make it back safely. Shallow diving and staying in your no deco limits means that gas management is as simple as just watching your gauge slowly drop down and when it gets close to the red, you swim upwards. The deeper you go, you need to consider the gas that you're actually breathing, the composition, the gas that's dissolving into your body tissues and how much gas you're going to need to literally get back to the surface, including the stops that you need to make in the water on the way. Diving down deep can mean that your air or the air that you're breathing is literally toxic or narcotic. And you can't just swim up to the surface whenever you want to. You have to stop at certain depths to allow gas inside of your tissues to slowly dissipate. If you stay shallow, the most you'll have to worry about is a three minute safety stop and they're not so bad. So recreational diving it is okay, but as with most things in life, it does have its downsides. But compared to the alternatives, deep diving or not diving at all, it definitely has its perks. Remember that you vote for these on the community tab, so if you're not subscribed to the channel, you don't get a vote. So click that little red button and once a week you'll get to pick what I talk about on a Saturday. Uh, but what is your opinion about recreational diving? Most of my dives are recreational today. If there's nothing to see down there, then what's the point in going down deep? Let us know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm.